Okay, roll call, everyone is here. Um, can I get approval of the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, moving on to communications. We do not have any open comments, so we will go to standing committee reports. Uh, Lisa, you wanna start? I haven't attended any committee meetings. Nothing, okay. Peggy, have you had anything? Um, nothing until next week. Okay, Larry? Uh, we have a policy meeting next week. Uh, MSBA put out a, a short document about all of the legislation that's passed that's gonna go into effect in August and what their approach is to what they're doing to, to review policy to get it in our hands as much as we can. Uh, we also got emailed that our OBO presentation for our award will be Friday the 28th, uh, September 28th down at, uh, down at Tantara. And uh, Kevin, Jean, Jean, I keep forgetting her name. <laughs> and, and I are gonna we'll do the presentation. But that's Friday at nine in the morning. The uh, uh, the early childhood presentation is Saturday morning, if I have it right here. Saturday morning at nine thirty. So Melville will be presenting at that. And I, Larry, I have that PowerPoint presentation ready. And I'll send it to everybody, and if okay. you all approve of it, then we'll just go ahead and use it. Yeah, we're presenting with three more peculiar, so that they have a pretty much of a sim similar approach, and I know a couple of people on that board, so I think that'll be pretty good. And the only other thing I'll report is uh, uh, our public review committee for special school district is concluded, and we're doing our presentations now. Uh, last week, we presented to the special school district's board of Edu board of education. And September 17th, we'll present to the Governing Council. And there's two recommendations that will probably affect most of the school boards in the area. Um, there's a partnership agreement that's set up on how special school district and, and local districts work together. And they pretty much choose which of those functions they want to focus on. We're going to recommend that there's a, a subset of four of them, which is, is data and, and professional development and, and training and a couple others that would be the minimum part, minimum set. We're also gonna recommend that the uh, partnership agreement also be signed by the school board president to make sure everybody's had a chance to see it. And so that's it for me. Okay. Kevin? Nothing. Jean? Nothing? Tori? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Well, that made that easy. Um, moving on to action items by consent. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We probably should pull the. Peggy, a second. We should pull the uh, the minutes because we were here. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. No. I will. Okay, I'm going to pull out five A. All right, I'm going to pull out five A. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve five B, C, D, E, and F? So moved. Now second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, and then five A. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second? second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I'll abstain. Oh, were you not here either? Okay. Perfect. So five, two. All right, we'll move on <coughs> to considering our purchase of a new refrigerated box truck. Hi. very small, um, but it houses some of our frozen commodities and we utilize a, currently our 18 foot uh, refrigerated box truck, which is 17 years old to drive with the schools daily, multiple schools daily. And uh, we don't have enough space here on site to store everything. So we do store up off site quite a few uh, cases of products. So once a week we travel up to page, up a page to pick up, uh, there's, it's just time uh, before we start dumping a lot of money in it being so old and having so many uh, miles on it. So um, we worked it into the budget, uh, worked with Marshall on that, and we put it out for bid and we got a couple bids back. Um, as you see, um, I try to give an explanation. We are uh, not recommending the lowest bidder due to the fact of the estimated time of delivery for the lowest bidder being March of 2019. Um, 
the work we would have to do to our current truck to keep it going until March of 2019 would way exceed that $2,700. So um, we are recommending to go with Vanguard. Hopefully have it in October without problems. Any questions you have for me? I don't think so. All right. Or Dan? <laughs> no, him shaking his head. We're good. We know. <laughs> I think the write up actually that we had was pretty pretty good and thorough in talking about end of life and when that typically is. Um, and you had apparently gone out and looked. Actually, I'm a little bit curious about that. How did you find out when typical end of life is? I think there was a note in there that typically they die at a certain point. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> no, on this particular truck, it's got the same engine as the buses I just got rid of. They got a Caterpillar engine in it. And so they go to about 150,000 miles, which this truck is right at. Um, the refrigeration unit on it is uh, beyond repair, basically. It's running, but kind of. And so the refrigeration unit just on this truck is $20,000. And I really can't see putting that kind of money into a truck that's a 2001. So. Yeah, so knowing that, this is almost predictive maintenance to get rid of it and get a new one. So. Absolutely, yeah, this is a pretty much easy one. Yeah. Okay. That was good. Thanks for all that information. All right. Can I get a motion to approve? A motion to approve the Vanguard truck for $98,812.75. Is there a second? I'll second. 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 Go ahead, Peggy. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very precise. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. All the summer projects. You did a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, you did. Good evening. Um, John put us a little slideshow together. Um, I'll start with the, this is the HVAC that we added um, at Oak Hill High in Belleville. A couple aerial shots from his um, drone. Um, on the HVAC, uh, we are about 95% complete. We got left is um, some air balancing to do in the next few weeks, which will be done after school in the evening. So that's kind of how we did Berkeley last year. So should I interrupt school? And also on the control side, they um, completed all the classrooms. So they still got some control to do on the chiller outside and the boiler room, which should be completed in the next two weeks as well. So um, overall, it came um, right at our budget and um, everything turned out great. And hopefully um, it'll be a lot less maintenance for us and we'll get years of good use out of this equipment. And it's the same equipment we put in over at Berkeley as well. So it's, okay. it's all Daikin equipment, which we're okay. familiar with. And um, we're probably have to, um, probably in the near future, I'd like to set some money aside for training because um, we're kind of getting into this Daikin and it's, um, it's more, lap, it's, most of the maintenance and is done by, by laptop. So. I'd like to maybe send a couple guys to training in the next um, coming year. So I'll get some numbers on that and um, get with you guys on that. Um, here we got some roofs we did. Um, Washington, Oakville High, Woolwind. Um, whoops. Okay. Um, the roofs are um, about 95% complete. All we got left is Oakville High. We have the sheet metal, which they started yesterday which should be completed either tomorrow or Monday, and um, roofing will be 100% complete. And um, we had no surprises there, so everything turned out good there. Um, we did some asphalt work. Uh, we did, um, out right outside by the pool, we had that path that was um, pretty bad shape. It was kind of um, a safety issue, so we replaced it. We did um, asphalt sealant stripes as well. And we took some of the money that we had left on asphalt and we did some um, concrete work. We did some sidewalks at Berkeley. We did some repairs at Bernard. Nice. We added the sidewalk over to early childhood on the back entrance. And then we redid the front entrance over at Beasley because there was a lot of cracked concrete and standing water. So that turned out very nice. Good. Mike, was that uh, the uh, driveway over at Beasley addressed yet? Was yes, the VA has finished their project on well, not finished, but right. for what they had to use our dry fire, they did um, did some repairs. They added that new chain link fence, then the garden. What it was, it was too narrow, or if there was something wrong with the... Um, Which school? Beasley. At Beasley, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the issue was there, but I can't. 
but nothing wasn't else. Wasn't there there. wasn't there construction going on over? I mean, no, it had nothing to do with no construction. Yeah, because they had us down to one lane, one way. So yeah, but, but that's all. I don't know what all done. There, there was some potholes in there or something. That there is a few more potholes in front we need to address. Okay, yeah. all right. You know, okay. We Thank are getting, you. We are going. Um, we got some smaller projects in the, in the coming weeks, so we okay. Thank we'll you. We'll touch those up. Uh, this is the new gym floor in Melville here. Wow, That's good. Um, turned out great, just like um, Oakville seniors. Mm -hmm. um, there again, everything came right in at our number. Let's see what else. Chance better. And the football field <coughs> um, turned out very nice. Um, the new turf, and then we had uh, track resprayed, and relined. Um, they they finished that like in they third week of June, quick. I think it was. So yeah, yeah, that one. They really uh, moved fast on that and did a great job. Um, ceilings, we did some ceilings. Um, John got some pictures of the construction during the project. Um, Washington Middle, we did the kitchen. Um, the, um, Katie, I've written up a few times for the not being a, a white or not white. Uh, solid wipeable surface. So um, so finally we uh, put in our budget to get that completed and that turned out great. Um, the HVAC was noisy because it only had like two or three supplies. And now we got um, we added about 10, 10 additional supply registers and so now it's more quiet than it used to be and we added the LED lighting. Um, Katie, her and her, um, her workers painted the walls white so it's um, very bright. Yeah. So. I'm sure her leaders are very happy with that. The Melville project, we did the nine classrooms here. Um, they got the new ceiling, new LED lights, and they all got ox sensors, so they all have ox sensors as well. And, uh, those turned out very well also. And uh, those are the ones that had the asbestos in it. We had to get it abated, so mm -hmm. that was completed before they started the, the ceiling. So that all turned out good and uh, right on budget. Um, Stair tread, um, we are about 90% complete. The um, manufacturer had an issue tr shipping their product, so they worked very hard the last two weeks to complete. Okay. Oakville Senior, Berkeley, and Oakville Middle. They did not get to wool until we would do that during Christmas break. Okay. Um, they're they're doing probably about four days to complete that project, so. We should have no problem getting that done during Christmas. And there was five treads they, they missed up on at Oakville Senior, which they pulled the wrong ones and put down the wrong ones. So they're gonna, we're gonna get five treads for free out of it. So nice. and they'll complete that during Christmas as well. Good. And I think that's all the slides John's got. Also, we did some other smaller projects. We, um, we did do some pool work right before school let out. We did some painting and some filter maintenance on the, um, we usually try and maintain the filters about every five years to a, have a company come in and go through them and put new sand in them. And we got that done in May, did a little TLC over there and the pool turned out, that project turned out very well. Did some carpeting as well. We um, did four offices. We did um, Beasley, Berkeley, Oakville Middle and Troutland offices with carpet squares. And I think everybody is thrilled with how that came out. They were just very worn. Th those are the four worst we had, so um, I'm trying to do four more for next year and kind of continue on with the okay. carpet replacement. We still got libraries and um, some other offices to do. So, um, as you can see behind me, we added a wall for a new PLL. No, I uh, like it. We started it. that about three weeks ago and complete almost complete. We got a, some um, cold base to do and a little bit of carpeting to touch up. But uh, that turned out very well. It does. It looks really and, um, good. They did that. Uh, there's a back room as well as the big PLL room. Very nice. And um, possibly yeah. might be a, a place to have your closed sessions. So uh, that turned out very well. Um, I think that's all I got. Any Mike, questions? Is, is that pool? That's a chlorine uh, filtering pool, right? Yes, it is. Have we ever considered switching the salt from that? There's I never have. I never it's really so looked into cheaper. it. It's so much cheaper. You know, the maintenance. Yeah, I don't know what's so all involved in it, but I can. Change the engineering. The question is, though, is it, will the pool last long enough to invest that kind of money? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't or know does it be just that expensive. One of those know, things that needs to I go mean, away. It's a, it's a, it's a, 
component you just put right on the current filter. Yeah, but and it it's, just it brought, for our size pool it was about fifteen hundred dollars probably. Mm -hmm. But the cost of the salt is so much. I cheaper. mean, you put the bags in at the beginning, and we're outside in the yeah. heat, and it's all summer. I mean, I, I can't no even, more chemicals. I can't even begin to guess how much money we've saved since in the three years that we've had the salt water uh, chlorination. It's it's. Just, I can definitely check into it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, see, I don't know, you know like, the, like, like Sam said, the age of the pool, but if, if the pool's going to last five years, let's say, we could save a ton of money in that time if mm -hmm. it can happen. So, just a thought. No, I'll Do definitely check into it and get back to you guys. Do we have the facility plan anywhere? Excuse me? Is the pool anywhere on our five-year? We do have the, um, I believe we have the basement where the... Um, Boilers are and the, all the chlorine. Okay. Because we got some concrete issues down there. I think it's a year or two out, maybe. And, okay. But okay. It's on there. It's just. Right. It's okay. Pretty okay. good size number. So. Well, yeah, sure. I would be but interested. It could be another big investment. Right. I'd, I'd be interested in knowing what it would cost to convert it because I know the maintenance would be much less. So. I mean, keeping it chlorinated with salt is, is just incredibly cheaper, so. And the chlorine's what did a lot of damage over there, too, the yeah. concrete and the equipment as well. And, it, and it's so much better on your skin and your, mm -hmm. you know, it's... It's organic. <laughs> Use that word. It's organic. <laughs> then everybody will love it. <laughs> but I'll definitely check into it and get back okay, to you on that. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very thank much. You. All right. We're going to move on to reconsidering dates for change board meetings. So when we did the calendar back in April, um, I had tried to work around the ASA dates that I knew about and um, two of those have changed um, since that time. So we're looking at um, moving the October meeting and a January meeting. So we're, um, has some date options there, um, but we're recommending moving the October one back a week and the January one forward a week. October 25 and January 17. I'm good with both. Yeah. Yep, I'm good yes. too. Same here. I'm making the change now before I forget them. Okay. Is everybody else okay with those? Mm -hmm. All right. So that calendar has been adopted by the board, so we'll need a motion to move those two dates. I make a motion we change those two dates in the new board calendar to October 25th and January 17th. No second. All, right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, criteria for performance. Thanks for giving us the opportunity this evening. We'll only take a couple minutes of your time to give me an idea of where we have started to go a little bit with regards to our thinking, our planning for our district. Um, the criteria for performance excellence is really great. We are relatively new to our, our positions. After having gone through two days worth of training and then having to um, really gear up for a site visit that will occur next month for both Adam and myself, we, are, um, we start to really see the bigger picture. And so what this really revolves around is systems improvement. And so you know, not looking at things as silos, looking at how everything is integrated and how we start to go through the improvement process. So the purpose, uh, I'll let Adam kind of talk to that a little bit, it revolves around three big questions. All right, and so those questions are, is your organization doing as well as it could, and how do you know that, and then what and how should your organization improve or change over time? Um, and so those pieces are just that systems process piece that we 
are working on getting better about in continuous improvement? It also addresses goals, goal setting, um, how you are doing. You know, can you put not just the data piece behind it, but how you go about communicating that piece? And you know, are you addressing your strategy? Are you addressing your customers? Are you addressing your leadership? And ultimately, the last goal, and we'll, we'll deal with this more, all deals with results, which is exactly what we all want. We want for our schools, we want for our district, and it's about results. And so the focus with everything that we have started to go through um, in terms of our training and our, want to continue to bring you along and educate you in that process is to really focus on all the pieces that lead to results. Um, you can see, I don't know if you're referring uh, behind us, you can see, I mentioned some of these, um, you know, none of these foundations, are, these are all pillars of the Baldur's process of the criteria for performance excellence, but they're not individual silos. These are all things that strategy impacts customers, data impacts results, um, you know, leadership impacts the workforce, it impacts the operations. So one thing leads to everything else. And so that's the whole process of systems improvement, is improving the entire system by improving all the pieces of the system. And doing a better job of communicating that and really educating all of our folks. And so we do have a plan in place over the next few years to bring more of our central office administrators uh, through at least the training, maybe or maybe not the site visits that accompany that, but to really give people a better foundation, a better understanding of what it takes to be able to really roll out a plan and really ultimately see the results to it. I don't think Dr. Smith wants me to talk at all tonight, but um, when you look at the system's perspective, I think the key thing when, when you read that statement is about integration and everything coming together and working and, and offsetting pieces with each other. And so um, that's kind of the building block of integrating the core values and the mechanisms um, with the criteria to promote ongoing success. You're probably familiar with the work of Jim Collins, the good to great concept, you know, and why some companies make it, make the leap and others don't. Um, so there's a quick quote we just wanted to reference, um, you know, from someone who looks at leadership and looks at all the pieces of trying to make a company better. Um, there's probably a few names better to really talk about how someone sees this Baldur's process. And it really, it, it talks about mechanisms, it talks about discipline, it talks about integration, and it talks about results, which, you know, and very simple message, that's exactly what we're here to be able to try to improve and incorporate into our system. And the last piece really focuses on the core values and the concepts. So these 11, there are 11 big things here when you start drilling down into it a little bit. And all of these pieces are really addressed through the entire criteria for performance excellence. And I don't know if you have yet, if you haven't, We'll be giving you some information with regards to a small book um, with the educational process behind the Baldur's Foundation and, and all the questions that go into it and really, you know, what are we looking for? And so over the next 12 to 18 months, we will start to take you through one step at a time. You know, I mean, to try to go into a, you know, a large ex explanation of this wouldn't do it justice. But if we start picking at it one piece at a time, like we have very early stages began to, we start to now see that, you know, we have, we have a lot of systems and we have a lot of individual silos that are doing some really good work, but we may not necessarily integrate and collaborate the way that we always should. And so that is a piece that we are certainly working on. This process will take you through where we're at and you'll have lots of questions, you know, for us and we're asking lots of questions of ourselves. You know, so this is, there, there's a chance to be introspective there and reflective and um, it really it deals with beliefs and it deals with methodology and how are we going to take that and really move forward in the process. We would be open to any questions uh, that you may have. Again, every month we are scheduled to tackle just a little bit of a piece at a time. Um, so this one's the very much the big overview. Um, but, you know, we'll get down into some details starting in September and then through the entire 18-19 um, school year and likely into the 19-20 school year as well taking a little piece of time and just continuing to grab all these um, presentations that we've built um, and for any, you know, anybody that's new to the board, we can also bring that in through the process as well so they can get a better understanding of this.
So I, I just have a little a comment. Um, my employer, we had the, just attained the silver level in the Walbridge yeah. Ward, so I'm actually really familiar with it. There are a few pitfalls that um, I'd kind of like to share with you. We're 45 facilities in four different states. And you know, you were talking about the silos and trying to um, integrate. And um, I will tell you that you will end up with all these silos that are just sure that they have best practices. And so it can cause some real um, bad feelings and some mm -hmm. real disruption in, in work processes. So I just want to give you kind of like a heads up because the end goal is fantastic, you know, and it's all about quality and it's all about consistency and making sure, just like with, because I work in healthcare, with healthcare, with education, you want the person to have a similar high quality experiences, right? So um, I applaud your work. I know how difficult it is because uh, I work in the quality department. That's where my job kind of falls under. So, so you understand um, this very well. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> good. So good luck if you ever need, you know, to talk to me about experiences. I'm more than happy uh, to, to share those with you. We'll be coming. Because uh, we're six years <laughs> down the road on this. So. So you've invested right. some time, and it, that's, yes. it's not something, it's not an overnight process. It will right. take time. No, in um, fact, but you cannot move, you have to move through those steps in their order in the time that's allotted, so this isn't going to happen quickly. Correct. Yeah. What I was going to mention is with this, I think, believe the special school district started, their foray back in 2010, and I think around 2013 they did their first MQA, Missouri Quality Award, uh, nomination. And the way they described it to us is what they learned in just trying to answer those set of questions and really document goes along a lot with what, what Lisa's saying. But in 2015, their second pass, they got the state award. The writing was much cleaner, and then we had a chance to look at the 2017 nomination, which they did just for feedback. It's not, it's not for the timid. The first you know, about the first half a dozen questions are pretty informative to the general consumer. Well, if you really want to learn about an organization, I mean, especially the, the committee, we had to take a look at it. It was breathtaking what you can learn if you just take the time. But I can only imagine the time it takes to unravel all the depressions and all the, the vertical views to create kind of a homogeneous horizontal view where one, you know, what impacts what and what moves what. And we're just starting on that process. Yeah. We're starting to, you know, the big ball of yarn, we're just starting to pull on the string. Yeah, that's, so that's now you have to hire a cat to pull it around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys, like, went to school outside of work to get a doctorate degree and all that stuff, right? So now you're going down and, and working on this um, with the Baldridge thing, which is not easy to become a Baldridge evaluator, right? Um, so I commend you guys on, on that because I know this is a lot of extra work outside of the normal day and everything else that you're doing at the same time. So thank you for that. And it is very important. To your point, in the CI world, this is a little bit of that high level, how you bring everything together. And you've got, and you probably know this, then you've got like things like continuous classroom improvement, which we've been doing for a few years, which is that ground level where the action happens. Mm -hmm making the stuff happen. So this is kind of like the, hey, where are we going to? Where's the big picture? How do we bridge across? But then that buy-in part, how do we get people together to identify the issues, come up with the, the solutions to it with their buy-in because it's their answer? Um, so I think this is a great next step for the district as far as the direction we're going. I appreciate that you're leading this and uh, bringing the, the data perspective with all of it at the same time. So. Um, Best of luck. I've also got five years in the CI stuff, so I'm still doing it for some reason, even though I'm not in the CI department anymore. So if I can be of any help, let me know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? No? Thank you very Thanks. much. All right. That moves us to our last open comments, and we have none for that. So, Kevin, if you could put us in two closed. Move or make a motion to enter a close. 
Motion enter a closed session meeting for the purpose of reading of minutes of previous meetings and corrections and approval of same and other items under the Missouri Revised Statute 610.021, subsections 1 to 21, and 610.022, subsections 1 to 6. Legal action, causes of action or litigation, 610.021, subsection 1. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting particular employees, 610.021, subsection 3. And individually identifiable personal records, performance ratings, or records pertaining to employees or applications for employment, 610.021, subsection 13. Okay, roll call. Oh, wait, can I get a second? Second. Lisa? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Larry? Yes. Sam? Yes. Me? Yes. Emma? Jean? Sorry. It's okay. Yes. Um, I don't believe this. Tori? <laughs> Alzheimer's is Tori. <laughs> yes. Sorry. You know I know who All you right. are. <laughs> we are officially in closed session. Thank you for coming this evening.